Praise God. But I want to talk to you today about kingdom principles. Jesus spoke too many times about the kingdom of God is like. Amen. Kingdom princi principle. So I want to start today on, uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Jesus said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. I want you to really listen. This is what the kingdom of God is like. Is a man that scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. This is a revelation of how the kingdom of God works within each and every one of us. Just, as, just to repeat after me, this is how the kingdom of God works within me. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. That's what Jesus said. You're the one that sows you're the one who sows the seed in the kingdom inside of you. Inside of you. Remember, the soil is the heart, or you can say the spirit man, the human spirit. And Jesus says the kingdom works this way. You sow the seed on the ground. Or you can say you sow the seed in your heart. You sow the seed in your spirit man. And some people say, well, how do I sow that seed? Well, the confession of God's word sows the seed. Remember, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 8, verse 11. He said, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. So the seed to be sown is the word of God. And it's important to keep water in the seed, isn't it? Well, anyone that's had a garden, and if you never water the garden, you're not going to get a very good crop, are you? But how do we water the seed in us? By continuing, continuing to speak, because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. You realize that God wanted all the Israelites to obtain the promised land. He was leading them out of an oppressed government. He was leading them into a place of milk and honey that they would have more than enough. It was the will of God for them, for them to have the a full life in that land of milk and honey. And it was actually, if you really read the scripture, it was actually their land. It was actually their land. But a lot of Israelites died in the wilderness, never obtained what God intended for them to have. Why? Well, we know in the Bible it says they listened to the wrong Report. Ten of those twelve spies came with a bad report and they listened to them. They listened to the negative report, but God had already given it to them. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8, you see, it says, See, I have given you this land. God is saying, See, I have given you this land. Go and take possession of the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. The Israelites heard, what did they hear? They heard the word of God. They knew God gave them the land. But their eyes were not on what God had said. Their eyes were on the giants. They were on the problem the situation that was going on. But that's prophetic for today, if you really think about it. 
Their eyes was not on the word of God. Joshua and Caleb, though, had their eyes on the promise, on what God said. And God had given them that land. And they said, let's go and take it because God gave it to us. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, we read, For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was, no, was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. The Israelites heard what God said, but they wouldn't believe, trust, rely on what God said. Many people heard what God said in his word, but it's hard to get them to fix, to mix faith, to believe. It's hard for them to believe, to trust, and to rely on what God has said, or even to speak in agreement with God. I mean, just to really think about what's going on. And as we're studying and seeing what happened years ago, you know, I used to say, because Joyce knows this, I was a very negative person before Christ. I was very negative. The way I was raised, the way I was beaten down to a, to, to a place that I could... I could, my way of thinking was that I could never, ever accomplish anything or do anything. Basically, my task for the, my life here was to be a laborer and a workforce. I used to say things like, I can't do this and I can't do that. I didn't know how. That's a fact. And that's a fact to a lot of people that I've dealt with. And people say, I just can't do this. I even heard people say, I can't read. I can't write. That's a fact. That's a fact. Do you realize many people have never done that before? Like I've never done any of that before myself. If you've never done anything like that, surely you're not looking ahead trying to do something you've never done before. But then I read, and I read in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. To a lot of people, that's a small passage of Scripture. But to me, that became a promise. That became more than just a small passage of Scripture. It was the Holy Spirit. It was God speaking to my spirit. And I just kept saying that word over and over and over to myself, to my spirit man, until... I heard my spirit say this, yes, I can and I will. Now the pressure came against all the past that was on my life. The pressure came with the word of God that I would apply pressure to get against everything that I was told. And now I'm saying, yes, I can and I will and I'm going to move forward. Do you realize that the divine energy is in that word, in that word. And it will get inside of you as you speak it to yourself. As you speak it to yourself, what happens? It produces faith. It's the power source. It's the seed. It's the seed. It's the faith of God that causes you to be able to attain the promises the promise that God is speaking to you. And he says, yes, they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Some people think you're, you're lying if you quote the promise of God when you, don't see, when you don't see it in the natural. Just like December 12, 8.40 a.m., 2018, God spoke to me through his word, and he says, I am providing a place for my people and I'm going to plant them so they can have a home of their own. And they will no longer be disturbed. That is still alive in me. I speak it all the time. I pray it all the time. And God says right after that, and he says, the Lord himself, God himself will do this. Why did he say that to me? 
because my prayer says, Lord, do I need to do something? Do I need to make something happen? But God is saying, he says, I'm going to do this. So what is, what is it do I do? I just continue on the Lord. My prayer is that I would have ears to hear and eyes to see what he's doing and what he would have me do. Amen? You know, there's a difference between confessing and lying. Confession is saying what God says in his word. Confession is agreeing with God. A person can hear someone say, my needs are met according to Christ Jesus, according to God's riches that work in glory in Christ Jesus, and they are just hearing that person quote what God said. Some might think you don't have a need, but that person wasn't trying to convince others that it was really true, that it was already true. He was just agreeing with what God said already in order to get that divine energy to flow into him or her. If you start putting the word of God and believing what God says in his word about you and your life and agreeing with it and keep saying it to yourself, you're confessing that word. You're planting that seed in your life. You're planting it. And the power to attain the promise is in the word itself. Is in the word itself. The law found in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12 reveals, if you look at it, it reveals that the seed is in, is in itself and everything produces after its own kind. Does it not? Well, today they're twisting everything, trying to say it's not so, but it's still so, no matter what they do or say. And even mankind is trying to play with seeds to produce something else. But it never produces anything that God put in, uh, into place for us, according to his word. He says in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, as long as the earth endures... Is the earth still here today? Seed time and the harvest, cold and heat. We know cold, we're in a cold period of time, and then we'll be in the heat. Summer and winter, day and night will never cease. See, when God promises to supply your need or to heal your body, the seed is in the promise itself. The seed is in the promise itself. If you keep the word of God in your mouth and keep it to yourself, you sow the seed in the kingdom. You're sowing that seed in the kingdom. That's a kingdom principle. So I was a very negative person. Now I'm the complete opposite. Optimistic. I've been optimistic since I've been born again. Because God is a good God. God is a God that cares and he loves us. Amen. Luke chapter 17, verse 5 and 6 says, The apostle says to the Lord, increase our faith. You know that scripture, right? Increase our faith, Lord, increase our faith. And this is what Jesus replied in verse 6. He says, if you have faith... As small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry bush, mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it will obey you. If you have faith as a seed, and he made a point of, of showing us the smallest of the smallest of seed, the mustard seed, and if you would say, you would speak to the problem area or the situation in your life as you have heard God say to you with that seed. Amen? Jesus didn't say it would obey God. What did he say? 
He said it would obey you. It would obey you. You can only get that kind of faith from God's word. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What does God say about any of our situation? What does God say about your situation, whatever you might be going through? What does he say about it? Have we even taken the time to ask him? Have we even taken the time to put ourselves before him to see what he has to say about it? Because he will speak to us. And when we hear that, that's the word that he's given us. And we need to plant that seed in our hearts. Amen. He said it would obey you because the power of binding and loosing is on earth, not in heaven. In Matthew 18, 18, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So it must come through you. You must mix faith with God's word. And Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you would say. You would say. Now, I know the King James Version says you might say, but the Greek says you would say, and it would obey you. Something happens inside you when you speak the word of God to yourself. The Bible says faith comes and it gets deep inside of you that you know that God is not a man that he should lie. His word is absolute truth. For as many as the time as God has spoken to me and the pressure around us today comes to attack that very word. And I know when God has spoken to me in such drastic ways before that I had to obey because I know his voice. And when he speaks to me and I hear that voice, and even when I see out there that nothing, nothing, nothing in this world makes sense, but God has spoken to me to do something, to obey him, to rely on him and to trust him going forward, and then I look at everything out there and it just doesn't, just does not does not in the physical make sense at all. And everything inside the person starts to say, what am I going to do? Because I'm so used to living like this. This is how we operate. This is the way we've been taught. This is the way we've been trained. What should I do? And now you are put in a place to trusting him with everything that's on the inside of you. You know, nothing changes until you put that word in you and that seed is planted. When that seed is planted, you're trusting and relying on that seed, on that promise, on that word of God that it will come to pass. Not under my terms, but under his terms. The process is a difficult process. I mean, the process is basically putting down the flesh putting down everything that we know and trusting him and him alone and his word. This is quite a process. Maybe a lot of people hasn't been to that place or achieved that, but hey, you have to start somewhere in him by hearing his word to applying that word, believing that word and trusting him that you start seeing changes in your life. No matter what happens in this world, I know who takes care of me. I know who provides for me. You know, I like to say that I'm the provider, but I'm not the provider. He's the provider. I've had to learn that. Because, man, pressure and pressure comes on a person. If you think you're the provider and you think you can do all of this, you're going to be so much under pressure, you're going to break. You're going to crack. But when you get into that place of trusting and regard and just looking to him, trusting him and his word, because his word is the absolute truth. But it won't happen because a harvest requires planting. You can't have a harvest without a planting. Jesus tells us two faith secrets here. He says, faith 
works like a seed. Number one, faith works like a seed. And number two is the way to plant that seed is to say it to yourself, is to speak the word to yourself over, I mean, and over and over and over and over. You know, when God speaks to you, you, well, I'm going to say you, I'm going to say I, when God speaks to me, I am going to be in that place and stay in that place until I see it come to pass. Do you realize opposition will come during that time? As soon as God speaks to you, I guarantee you, or you can say like they say in that one, I guarantee, I guarantee it to you, you're going to have opposition. People are going to say things, mean things. Some think that they're trying to help you, but you're standing on that word. You're believing and trusting God in what he has spoken to you. Amen? In Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 27, Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Some people say, I just don't understand how my saying would cause it to come to pass. Well, that's exactly what Jesus was saying here, though you do not know how. You don't have to understand, understand how it grows and how it works. If you just have faith enough to believe what God said and do it, it will work. It will work. But it does help understand to how it works. How it works. It's just common sense to plant the seed and go to bed. We're getting ready to have springtime here. A lot of us are going to be planting garden. We're going to be planting seed. Amen? And we're going to go plant our seed, and then we're going to do everything we need to do, and then go to bed. And we know we're going to have a harvest. Right? It's just common sense to do that, isn't it? Why can't it be so much common sense to planting that word, the seed of God, in our hearts? Everyone knows when you plant a seed in the ground, that seed will grow what you planted. All right? Because we're talking about the word of God. If God is speaking to you about a promise that belongs to you, if it's healing, it's prosperity, whatever it may be, whatever it is that God is bringing to you, that seed that you're planting into your spirit, man, into your heart by faith will produce what? After its own kind. Nobody plants cucumbers and something else grows. Right? Right? So when we're planting the Word of God, that seed is going to reproduce, is going to bring a harvest after its kind of what you planted. See, a farmer plants his seed and he goes, you know, like a farmer, we watch him every year, and, you know, in the land that we have, it takes him maybe an hour and a half to plant the whole feed field, and then he's gone. Whew. Adios, amigos. You know? And the farmer says when it comes up, he doesn't know how. He doesn't know. He knows it works when he plants it. He doesn't understand the germination process, maybe. The life of the seed is in itself. Problem we're going to run into today because they're using a lot of hybrid seeds that they're not eventually going to, because they're not, according to what I believe is biblical truth and the way of planting real seeds, if you've planted the promise of God, the life is in that promise. The life is in that promise, in the seed. And if you sowed it in the soil of your heart, the spirit man, and it will germinate in the process of time. 
It takes a process because as you continue to, like I said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You keep saying it, saying it to yourself. And then through the process of time, your attitude, everything about you starts to change and you start saying, yes, I can. Yes, I will. Everything changes when it gets planted. Amen? The planted seed sprouts and grows. In Mark chapter 4, verse 28, Jesus says, All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. You know, there's a process of growth here. There's a process. As you can see, you're going to destroy your crop if you try to harvest the stalk. I've never seen a farmer come and try to harvest when the corn is only that high. You know, this looks like someone who has planted a healing promise and try to receive that promise early. I'm going to give you some examples. What I mean is they know the scripture and they see a glimpse of their healing. They know it's God's will, but they don't have the full manifestation of it. They're trying to harvest the stalk. There, this is where many people get in trouble. They don't use common sense with faith. When people get turned on, turned on to faith, they just seem to throw away common sense. They say they're going to live by faith, but they go and, and do foolish things. Trying to take the, the harvest, their harvest, without the manifestation. People hear the word. And I mean, I know people need to grow. I remember when I was in school in the Bible college, there was a friend of mine, a student that came in, and he, he read in the Bible, and he started to really getting into the Word and believing what the Word says. And he came in one day, and he left his glasses at home. He says, I believe that now I'm healed. And after so many hours in the course, because, you know, when you're in, in college, you have to do a lot of reading, studying, and after a period of time, he got frustrated and went home and got his glasses. Now, was the word of God truth or not? What did it do to his faith? Hmm? Question his faith. Did he have the full manifestation of that word? Hmm? There's a difference, right? But too many times people go through things like that and they don't have the full manifestation. They have a glimpse. I'm just trying to make a point. God's word is the absolute truth. His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen? The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. The Amplified says this, so faith comes by hearing what is told, what is told, and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message concerning Christ. A man struggled for a long time because he heard the message of faith. He loved God, but he didn't get his healing. He didn't get his healing. When I spoke with him about the word of truth, he was really upset at me. He thought I was saying that he didn't have faith. That's not what I was saying. All I was doing is sharing with him that the word had to stay planted until he could see himself healed. Until he could see himself healed. I've seen too many people when they had that word and was planted and all of a sudden one day they could see themselves healed that they would literally come up and take their healing at that moment. From hearing the word of God, faith comes. Faith grows. Eventually you get the harvest, the full manifestation. 
Or can I say the full kernel in the head, as the scripture says? It takes time for things to develop, to develop. And you don't try to harvest before you planted. What you've planted is mature. And I tell you, one other issue of people are trying to receive big things of God and have never worked out the smaller things in their lives. People want a tremendous healing, but they've never believed God for their cold or symptoms issues. So you need to start putting those things into practice. See, when the farmer, when the farmer sees his harvest, what does he do? He takes it. Once he sees his harvest, he, his harvest, he takes it. The same is true with the promises of God. When you see the manifestation in your spirit, it's yours for the taking. It's yours for the taking. I want to leave with it. Close as I close with this because I think it was Jerry Savelle. You can correct me, Joyce. I think it was Jerry Savelle that God has spoken to him about believing for a jet. Some people, you know, go nuts. What is he going to do with a jet? What's a pastor do you need to do with a jet? Da, 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 da. Well, God wants to use him to go across the world and preach the gospel, right? But the point is this. He planted the seed. He believed God, and it was planted in his heart. And he walked around, went from meetings to meet, preaching the word of God. And then one day, one day it just dropped into his spirit. And what dropped into his spirit, he said this, he says, I believe I just received my jet. Did he have it? No. No, he, believed. he believed and all of a sudden God, just, it just dropped into his spirit, man. I believe and I have it. I believe I have it right now. And guess what happened? The jet showed up. But to a lot of people, the jet didn't just show it up. The jet showed up free of charge. Hmm? There's a big difference. I mean, this is quite, but this is people that have been applying the word, living it out, and doing what God says for them to do. And I can tell you, I didn't get some of those in my life. Like when God told me to leave my job, it was time to leave my job, to drop a management job, the 401ks, all the benefits, drop it all at once after being there 20 what was it, 25, 28 years? And just trust them. I mean, looking back now, I said, they <laughs> I mean, I remember talking to a congregation. The whole congregation thought I was crazy, thought I was nuts. But I had no idea. Joyce had no idea. We had no idea what God was about to do. All I knew is I said, God, you want me to do this, you have to speak to her. I surely, right? God has to have something to say to her about it. So well, that's exactly what he did. But I can say and I can tell you today, by obeying and watching and that faith grows and it gets to, to the point that it's planted that you receive because it was months and months that went by because before I can see what God where he was putting me, what he was doing, and it's still so to this day. I will not move. I will not do anything unless God says, unless God's word comes true. So I want to leave you with this wisdom, with some wisdom today. Don't wait till something happens before you plant the word of God in you. Don't wait. Get close to God. Get close to his word. Start applying what he says to you. Start receiving it, living it out. There's going to come a day that you're going to have to be trusting him completely. Because that's the blessed life to us. Amen? I want to leave you with this passage of scripture in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 says this, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, to the Jews who had believed Jesus, or to the people who had believed Jesus, Jesus said, 
if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and that truth will set you free. Amen?